G'day, Piros here, and today I'm here to talk about the new Gen 2 foil drive. And the number one question I get asked, is it an e-foil? Well, to put the answer pretty simply, no it's not. Okay, thanks for listening, make sure you click like and subscribe, and stay tuned for more detailed information. <laughs> no, Modi Kenny, I'll go on a bit more about this, but no, it's not an e-foil. What the foil drive is, it's more an assist or a boost. So what it is, it's got three main ingredients. This is the, the, the control unit with the battery. This is a slim version. This is the max version. So you've got th that one part which goes straight on top of your foil track box and your mast bolt straight on top. That's it, nothing else. And it, all the weight is directly over the top of your foil. Number two is your motor. So it actually goes on. You can order this in three different positions. So this is at two, 20 centimeters. You can also get it at 150, 250, and if you do want to use it as an e-foil, you can actually mount it at 650 mil. So that will actually give you up here and run around as an e-foil around about 40 to 45 minutes, depending on your size and how you drive. But this, this is not actually designed to e-foil, although you can use it for that. So the third component is this remote. So I'll just turn this on and that's it. Now, how's the connectivity of that? So you've got the three components control unit with the battery, the motor and the remote, that's it. It bolts onto your board and you use your foils. So it can be your prone board, it can be your SUP board, it can be your SUP downwind board, it can be your wingding board, you can even put on a boogie board, anything that's got tracks. So they're the three components right there and it fits onto it. Very different to an e-foil. E-foil is all, all built into one. Weight wise, e-foils weigh 30 to 40 kilos. Some of the lighter ones, like 26, 27. This beautiful bit of kit. So this one here is my, this, I've got my 411 Prone with the max battery on it, that, um, in it, and my foil. It comes in around about 10.5 kilos. With the Sport battery, about 9.5 kilos. If you drop down to the slim version, this actual whole thing can actually um, start out at two and a half kilos and with the bigger battery goes three and a half. So that's insane, right? That's insanely light. And then once you get on the wave with your boost, this motor comes completely out of the water. So just have a look at a couple of these photos i got here. So you use it as a boost or assist to get onto the wave. So who should use a foil drive? Well, it's made for absolutely everybody. And there's all different types of applications. So battery life-wise, well, you know, if you own a SUP, the guys on the SUP, they're the ones getting really, really long battery life out of these things because they're cruising back out and uh, you know they catch a wave and they just paddle out with a paddle assist. So this is on the, this has actually got the paddle assist, it's just three little clicks on the top, one, two, three. So there it starts now. So that's actually uh, at 32%. So if I was on my prone, I can paddle that in the hand, I can even just put it down under my chest and just keep paddling. So you do that with the SUPS and it gets a real long range. But I've actually, the reason I got a four drives, I had a full blown shoulder reconstruction and just before that got better, I was out towing, tow foiling, and I broke my hand so I can't paddle. So I don't paddle at all. And this is probably one of the greatest things about this is I get up on a wave and when I finish on the wave, I actually foil back out. So I'm actually going, driving back out and I'm probably around about 50% power. I look for a wave coming and I turn off the top and come around and it is just insane. It's so much fun. I'm seriously addicted to it. And I think I'm gonna to struggle to go back and start paddling. Just have a look at this vision here, you'll actually see me doing this where I'm actually heading out to sea, I'm looking for a bump, I'm turning off it, and I'm coming back in. So that is just so much fun. So I'm actually going out 100 metres, 150 metres, right out past the surface. I'm going out wide, and if there's a bit of a lump, and, a bit of, and if it's blowing on shorts, even better, I get like a bit of a downwind start, and I ride the bumps, again the motor's completely out of the water, and I'm free foiling. And I come through before anybody's even starting to paddle, I'm free foiling through. I'm not using the motor at all. Once I'm on the wave, I don't use the motor at all. And it is just insane. So that same point is downwinding. So anyone that's done SUP downwinding just knows the pain, the trials, the tribulation, just how hard it is. It is agony. The rewards are great, but it is a really long, slow, hard learning curve. So the first time I went out on this, I didn't go out of my SUP, in fact I don't even own a SUP anymore, I've just got my two prone boards, that's it. 
I went out on my large board, the 5.5s. This is 5.5 by 20, 55 litres, which is really good. So that means out in the ocean, I can just get on a little bump, hop up, and away I went. 5K down window, I was straight up. Sure, fell off a few times, but hey, I was foiling. All the way down the beach, just flew. Before I knew it, uh, it was over. I still had tons of battery left, and hey, now I can do downwinding. So you don't have to go through the agony of going out there with your sup and then you have a fall and then you can't get back up. The wind's dropped or the swell's a bit cross on. It's just, this has to be the greatest downwind device in the world by far, no holes barred. And again, you don't need the big giant wings. You don't need to go to the Axis, you know, PNG 1300s and everything like that to get up because the motor's getting up. So you can ride your prone foils. Like this is like my uh, 980 code. I also have an 1130 code. So you just, either one of those and you're away. And it is just amazing. The downwind side of things is just crazy. You have to try it. You have to see it to believe it. You will not need to subfoil downwind anymore. Not that I got anything against it. This is just so much easier. Why put yourself through the pain? And you are free foiling. You are free foiling. You're not out there, your finger on the trigger the whole time. You are actually free foiling. Go out, give it a go, talk to some people that have done it. Now, I've only been at the foil drive thing for probably almost four weeks, so I'm still pretty new to it. So I started out on this DC 55, 20, 20 wide, 55 litres. Now with that, with the code 1130, I can actually get up and start into the wind against the chop, because I've got plenty of lift from the 1130 wing, plenty of volume and length of the board, and it gets me up. I put the 980 on, on this. I can just do it. I'd probably have to bear off a little bit and go of the chop, but when the battery gets a little bit lower, I probably have to go a, a bit more following the chop. I've gone, only just recently just gone back onto my 411 prone. So this is 411 by 19 and a half by 42 liters. So still a good amount of volume in it. Definitely, I can, I can only get up on this is if I catch the, the beginning of a wave. And what I mean by that is, you don't want to be getting, when you're learning, you don't actually want to be powering down the face of a wave proning, because all of a sudden when you go over that little apex, you just accelerate and take off and you can't get up quick enough. So as soon as I get that little drive, I'm running, I actually run off the back of the wave and that little valley in the back, I just go down there and that's where I pop to my feet, I roll off and I go out and I look for a big one and I just go smack out and come back around and you just do laps, and I just do laps, and laps, and laps. And the only reason I stop is if I fall off. Now on the max battery, I will be able to do that for, depending on how hard I'm, I'm foiling back out, for around about an hour to an hour and a half, just depending on how hard I go back out. So if you're getting really long, five, 600 meter waves, I'm actually foiling the whole way back, on foil the whole way back, and that does tear up the battery. If you want to save more battery, you drop down, put it into paddle mode and paddle back out. So, but I can't do that. I don't want to do that. I'm lazy and I'm addicted to just doing it the easy way. So pretty amazing. So I've, I've seen it, it's taken me like say three, four weeks and I'm now back onto what I normally prone on. So I'm a 980 code, 150 tail and 411 Sonova. And I will not drop below this board because it just, when the batteries get down to like uh, the 20, 15 percent mark, they get a little bit harder to get up on. So it's okay on this board, I can actually get up in sub 10%, which you really shouldn't take your batteries that low, by the way. But I can still get up on that because I've got the volume in it. And if I'm going to downwind, I'm, probably, I'm going to go out on that as well because the conditions change. And if the swell comes sort of cross, you know, cross swell and it's not sort of going with the wind, the bigger board definitely makes it easier to start. Now, one of the single greatest features I want to talk to you about this board about is this remote. So it instantly connects. There's no pairing. It all comes prepared and you don't have to select a menu and go, you know, um, and, and get the thing to work. The other thing is, I don't know how Paul has done this. It's just through some wizardry, but this whole board somehow becomes an antenna. So if you've ever been on an e-foil in the surf, going out through the brake, you get water over the front, it disconnects. You're trying to get up on these small boards, you're going along, you push the nose down, it disconnects. Your nose diving go in, it becomes a swearing fest. I've actually been out on pretty big surf on the e-foil, and then I came in, I got flogged on the inside, and I could not get going again. I could not get back up onto my feet. I ended up having to go to the beach and walk 
um, probably a K back into the, the river inlet and, and cruise back that way because I could not start. It was, it was like really rough. The beauty of this is it actually works underwater as well. So you keep it on the board, the whole board's an antenna, which means, have a look at this video, this vision, you can actually duck dive and gas it and come flying out the other side. It's mental good. It's the greatest thing uh, for just, you know, for any electric foil board in the ocean. I've never come across anything that just stays connected like this. So that also means is you don't have to go out up on your feet, which you would on an e-fog to try and get up over the white water. You can actually just hang onto the nose, stick your head down and just punch through. You don't even have to duck dive and just bang, 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 bang. Did it today at Corumban, it was like, you know, two, three foot, just straight out. Didn't even have to turn, just drove straight through anything. And from the beach to out the back was like, 45 seconds and I was out. It's just so good. Then I just turn, catch a little bump, get up, go around, do my big Rio and just repeat, repeat, repeat. So that's, that alone is just one thing that would actually, I would say, if you want to surf in the ocean, you want to do performance stuff, that is really handy because you get on those short e-foil boards, man, they're really hard, especially my weight, 80 kilos, you're on a 4.2, you're trying to get up without pushing the nose under, it's an art to getting up. Now in saying this, these when you first start, it's not that simple as easy as it looks in the videos. I've done a lot, a lot, a lot of practice. So for me, I um, just here, I'll just do a little quick little get up. I'll get up, I'll kneel, I'll just wait for, I can, you can feel with your hands, keep the pressure on the nose, you can feel the board coming and I'll just do like the one, two and pop up. And that's the best way to do it. Again, try and avoid doing it on a wave because that's super hard and you're gonna get super boosted. So again, but again, like that one, you just roll off and come back. If you look at the one of James Casey, when he's on his little 720, um, and he catches that really big wave, he actually gets a, gets a bump, he comes off and he rolls off and he goes down the dish down the back. That's what you need to practice it. But again, if you have a bigger board and a bigger foil, you can actually just do it in dead flat glass water. And that's probably the best way to do it up first. So a little bit more about the batteries. What am I getting out of my batteries? Well, you know, they're sort of, I'm going out pushing them pretty hard, doing laps, so I've got the, uh, the Max and the Sport. Out of that, right now, with me going out and pumping laps, I'm getting around about an hour and a half to an hour and three quarters with the two batteries combined. And that's on this board. Uh, on this board, um, I, I get an extra 15 minutes because the starts are so much more efficient and I get up. And when I'm foiling, uh, you know, if I touch down, there's just more board there, and then the, the foil drive um, doesn't have to work as hard. But anyway, I'll just put up some few more of my shots of me just sort of, of using it. The, the other thing too, when I'm talking about coming off, off these waves, you've, you've got the, the power transfer from sort of front to back, and that, that also takes some practice. I know Paul from um, for foil drives actually put a video up um, talking about it in detail, just be really quick about it. But actually when you're coming up, you are front foot heavy because you are on the motor. When you take your finger off the motor to turn, you'll actually make the nose dive. So you've got to get your weight back. Originally I was moving my front foot. Now my front foot doesn't move at all. I might screw the, the back foot a little bit, but it, it's mainly through just pushing the weight forwards from my hips on my front leg and then depowering coming back like that. And then as soon as you take your finger off the trigger, it actually, the foil jacks itself. You don't have to punt it up because the motor actually holds it from getting up on the foil. So don't turn and chase wave going yeah, yeah, and, just, and just keep driving and driving and driving. Just take your finger off, let the foil do the work. Especially these codes, mate, they just glide and just go. Okay, supply wise, these things are a little bit hard to get. Surf effects have actually got one in stock. This is it here, which I have to give back today. There's more ordered, second orders are almost gone, but you know, mate, they're all coming through. The boys are working their ring out to get it out. To all the crew at Fall Drive, I'm just frothing on this. It's great. It's the, it's just, you know, I'm so happy. I'm having so much fun. Everyone just says I'm just foiling with a big uh, um, smile on my mouth. I'll talk to you a bit, uh, I'm gonna do another video just on battery charging and things like that. I'm actually gonna put a charger in my car, but that's gonna be a whole new episode. So anyway, thanks for listening. Get out there, check out a Fall Drive, go out and have some fun. You.